welcome to a video summary of the Samsung HTJ7750 7.1 home theatre system. You can read the full in-depth review from a link in the description below. Looking at the main unit first, we have a tray loading disc mechanism, simple display unit, some touch sensitive controls, in addition to a USB port where you can plug in the likes of an MP3 player. You can also see the valve amplification on the top. As we can see at the rear we have most of the rest of the connections, including the power input, colour-coded speaker terminals for the front, surround and subwoofer, an HDMI out, ideally you want to connect this to the ARC capable input on your TV if it has one, two HDMI inputs, a LAN port, although there is Wi-Fi built in, RCA stereo in, an FM antenna, and a Toslink digital input. The J7750 makes use of a wireless unit where you attach the rear speakers, also through colour-coded terminals, but that also means you will need an extra power source for wherever you're going to place it. Still, that's handy for not having wires trailing all around the room. The HTJ7750 comes with six speaker units. First of all we have the centre, and then there are two front surround speakers, both with added height channels for the 7.1 effect, and you also get two rear surround speakers, which as we say, plug into the wireless base unit. And last but by no means least, we also get a passive wired subwoofer in the box. It's of a good size and does a pretty decent job with the local frequency effects. We can't say we're all that thrilled with the supplied remote control. I mean, it looks nice enough, quite snazzy, but the directional keys, which are placed here, here and here, aren't exactly the easiest to find. Other than that, it's not too bad. So we've got uh, all our speakers wired in now, and we're just going to quickly give you a scoot around the menus and interface. So this is the home screen which consolidates just about everything nowadays. Instead of sprawling across multiple screens, I've got the disc menu to the left, the various multimedia streaming options to the centre, and a link to the Samsung App Store. Along the bottom are some recommended apps, and various shortcuts to your source input menu, and your settings. We will just stress that this is uh, a very early model so not all the UK apps are ready to go on this firmware but by the time of general release we'll have the likes of iPlayer, Netflix and all the catch-up services available. Just delving into the settings a moment and it's well worth going into your speaker settings, perhaps even getting a tape measure out and measuring the distances the speakers are from your major listening position and then you can just input them in there for the best surround effect. You can actually kind of automate it with Samsung Sound Customizer feature, but we prefer the manual method. Picture menu, some various resolution. Frame rate settings, pretty safe leaving all these on auto these days. They are generally the best. And then we've got a few other options. We've got network settings, which is pretty obvious. Some smart hub bits and pieces. The system menu. And a support page. So there we have the, the HTJ7750's user interface. Priced at just under £800. This isn't the cheapest solution out there, but the overall picture and sound quality, ease of use, and extensive smart features means it's worth an AV Forums recommended award. You can read the full in-depth review at avforums.com forward slash reviews. You can also see more videos at avforums.com forward slash videos. And why not follow us on Twitter and like our Facebook page. Thanks for watching.